Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the SDL 2.0 tutorial series. In this video we'll be covering transformations in SDL and we will be implementing a few functions to edit our, our um, position, rotation and scale of our entities. So the first thing that we'll need to do is edit our graphics.h render uh, draw texture function and in this uh, beside the clip and render rectangles, we'll need a few more variables for this function. First one being a float of the angle of rotation. This will be 0.0f by default. And another one will be sdl underscore render flip. Renderer flip. And we'll call this one flip. And this will tell us whether we're not flipped at all, flipped horizontally or vertically. Now, to go to our CPP file to edit this as well, we will go to graphics.cpp and go down to our draw texture. Now here, we'll do float angle and SDL render flip, flip. Now in our SDR render copy, will be render copy EX, so the extended one, and this will be, uh, as you can see here, it takes in an angle so we'll pass it the angle that we have here. Uh, the center we don't need to worry about, so we can pass in null. And finally, our flip. And this will be it for this function. Now, moving on to our game entity, we need to implement our scaling. And for this, we'll go to gameEntity.h. And then here, we have our position rotation. We'll add another vector to, which is our scale. So vector two, m scale, and we'll have to add our getters and setters for that as well. So void scale vector two scale and vector two scale space space equals world. So it is. Uh, world space by default, just like everything else. And now we just need to go to our CPP file and implement that. So in our CPP, let's see here, there we go. And right underneath our rotation, we will implement our scaling. And in here, we'll do void game entity scale vector2 scale, so this is our setter. We'll just say that m scale is going to be equal to scale. And this will be it for that. Uh, next up will be our getter. And for the getter, it will be a bit different, just like all our, all our other getters. It will be vector2, game entity, scale, and this will take space, space. So we'll say that if the space is local and if there is no parent, then we can just return our M scale. So space equals local or M parent is equal to null, return M scale. Otherwise, we need to do a bit of calculations. So first we'll do vector two parent scale is going to be equal to m parent scale world. So we'll get the parent's world scales because our scale will be affected by the parent scale as well. And then we'll do return a vector two of our parent scale dot x times our m scale dot x. And parent scale dot y multiplied by m scale dot y. Oh, I called it space for some reason. Okay, scale. There we go. And this should be it for our getter and setter. But now our position will be affected by the parent scale because if our position is 100 away from the parent and we scale up the parent by twice as much, our position should be 200 away from the parent instead. 
So we will need to update our getter for the position. And for that, we'll create a couple of vector twos. So vector two parent scale is going to be equal to m parent parent scale world. And we'll need a, another vector two, which we will save the rotated vector in. So vector two rod position is going to be equal to rotate vector of m pause and parent location local. So rotation local. And then over here now, we will return something a bit different. So it will be our parents world position plus a new vector two, which will take our rotated position dot x multiplied by the parent scale. So parent scale dot x and for the y we'll do the same thing. So rod position dot y times parent scale dot y. And this will be it for our position. So now we have almost everything set up. Now we'll need a few other things. For example, we need to initialize our, um, our scale. And to initialize it, we'll add a couple of things into our math helper class. So in our math helper dot h, all the way at the end, we'll declare a few constant vector twos. So we'll do const vector two vec2 underscore 0, which will be equal to 0.0f and 0.0f. It just makes it a lot easier for us to work with vector 2s this way, and const vector2, vec2 underscore 1, will be equal to 1.0f and 1.0f. And maybe we'll do vector2 dot up and underscore up and right. So we have const vector 2, vec2 underscore up will be equal to 0.0f and 1.0f and const vector2 vec2 underscore right is going to be equal to 1.0f and 0.0f and we'll need those later on but for now we will only need vec2 vec underscore 1 because our scale will start off as being one and one. So if we go back to game entity now, and in the constructor, we'll just say that our M scale is going to be equal to vec2 underscore one. And this should be it for our game manager. Now in our texture class, so if we go to texture.cpp, we will need to edit this a little bit. And to do that, we will create another vector2 for our scale. So vector2 scale is going to be our world scale. And then our render rec.x is going to be our position x minus the width times our scale.x times 0 0.5. And the height will be the same thing, but scale.y. But now we need to change our render rect width and height to match our scaled width and height. And for that, we will do mrect mrenderrect dot y is going to be equal to an int cast of m width multiplied by the scale dot x and render rect dot oh. This is dot width, and this is dot height is going to be equal to int m height multiplied by scale dot y. And these are the calculations that we're going to need. Finally, we need to pass in our rotation. And for that, we will do rotation world and this will be our world rotation passed in. We don't need to worry about the render flip for now. So 
we can go back to our game entity.h or where was that oh right here so in our graphics.h it will give us an error since we didn't give it a default value so we'll give it one here so underscore um, this one will be SEL underscore flip none so we'll do flip none for now maybe we'll cover flipping the texture later on but for now we'll just keep it as none and that should be it for our render texture now if we try to run everything should run the same way that it ran before so let's see if we caused any errors nope not yet so now we still have the two hello world so let's say let's see what happens now if we try to rotate them so if we go to game manager and over here we'll do m text oh maybe maybe we should add our rotation function as well so now we have translate we should add rotate as well so under translate void rotate this will take a float amount and with that we'll go to our cpp file so if we go to our game entity cpp and we'll go down right underneath translate and we'll do a void game entity rotate float amount and in here we'll do m rotation plus equals the amount that we give it so now that we have a way to rotate our entity we can go back to the game manager and start rotating text one so m text rotate by let's say 10 times m timer delta time so it should be 10 degrees per second and let's see how that goes there we go so now our hello world is rotating now what happens if we make text 2 a child of text 1 with the setup that we have text 2 should start rotating around text 1 so if we go here and say that m text 2 parent is our m text and run it there we go so now it's rotating around the center which is hello world what if we want hello world the second one to stay the same what we can do is set the rotation for m text 2 negative of whatever m text 1 is so m text 2 rotate by negative 10.0 f times m timer delta time now if we save that and run it and there we go it's rotating around it it's staying horizontal but it's still rotating around its parent okay so now what happens if we try to scale things a little bit so let's try to our scaling m text 2 scale let's give it a vector 2 of let's say 0.5 f and 0.75 f just so that things are not just uh, let's see so there we go now it's scale differently so now what would happen if we try to scale the parent instead and if we scale the parent we should have it rotate a bit closer to the parent than it is right now so if we try to scale mtex1 so mtex scale and let's give it a scale of let's say 0.1 so vector 2 0.1 f and 0.1 f so it should be much smaller now but uh, but the other one should oh everything scaled down because m text 2 is scaled as well so let's try to make m, m text 2 scaled a bit higher so let's give it 10.0 10 scale as well as let's say 7.5 scale And there we go. So it's rotating around its parent still. It's still horizontal, but as you can see here, um, it just depends on the scale of the parent. The 
distance should only depend on the scale of the parent. So as you can see, now it's rotating right here. If we increase the scale by a lot more, it should not affect how far it is from its parent. So if we say, if we let's say make it 20 and 20, there we go. So its distance from its parent did not change. It's still the same, but the only thing that's changed is how big it is. So this is it for transformations in SDL 2.0. I really hope that this video helped. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.